Okay, writing the paper. Okay, once you have submitted your abstract and the program committee has accepted it, then they're going to send you some writing instructions for this paper. And those writing instructions are going to be in the form of an SP template. There are going to be some guidelines as how to write your paper, put an agenda or put a, um, an outline together, uh, how to cite references, things of that nature. So how do you get started writing the paper? You submit the abstract. It's got great work that you've done. You want to present it. But now, you, now the rubber hits the road. How do you write the paper? Okay, you first got to organize your thoughts. And the author kit that SP sends you is very informative to tell you how to do that. Okay, so don't discount that. They send that to you uh, online, and I think they used to send it to you by uh, mail. But it gives you a lot of good resources about how to write the paper, how to cite the references, how to do acknowledgments, how to structure the paper, and which we're going to talk about here this morning. And it also gives you the SP template that you fit that into for the conference. So you get your author kit, you examine that, it takes you a while to examine that and then start write, to start writing your paper and, and fill in the template. But then you have to go back and survey the literature. And I mentioned this when you submitted your abstract. Go back and look at the literature. Who has written papers on the subject that you've written about? Okay. You can, of course, you can go to One Petro to find that, but you can also use those papers that you found in One Petro that uh, similar papers, what you've written, that you can put as references to your paper. Okay. Now the author kit. This is what it looks like from the screen. Okay. This is the the template. It gives you the deadline dates, uh, the SP forms. It gives you. you know, all your, your abstract goes into a paper proposal management system. It also tells you the due dates. Pay specific attention to those due dates, okay? There's the manuscript information. It tells you about the template, the instructions for the template. It tells you about preparing the SP manuscript. The style guide is a reference. Um, if you don't put a paper together in the time that's stated up there in the author kit, you don't present. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. So then there's peer review. You can have your paper uh, submitted for peer review after the conference. Okay. Once you've submitted your manuscript, and it gets into the conference, and you can elect to have it submitted for peer review. What I mean by that is that you can elect to have it put in one of the journals. Okay. Then it goes into a different process, peer review. I'll talk a little bit about that much later. And there's the templates. The templates are uh, linked, okay, so you can go to them electronically. And there's a manuscript template, two types of templates, manuscript template and a PowerPoint template, okay. PowerPoint template for the conference, for presenting it at the conference, okay. And then the e-poster presentations, it gives you guidelines, all very good resources to look at. Don't discount them, okay. Even guys that have written a lot of papers, go look at these again, my suggestion. Okay, in your literature survey, Okay, what has attracted you when you wanted to read a paper, to read that paper? Okay, may have been the title, you read the abstract, maybe you read, go to read the conclusions, you skim the headings and the graphics, and you decide whether you want to read the paper or not. Okay, what's in the content? Okay, after you get through that, what's the right amount of detail? Is the, does it have the right amount of detail to describe the process that you're reading about? Okay, does it have... Exp uh, sufficient explanation of those methods. Okay, if it's, a, if, if it's a methodology type paper, it's a simulation type paper, does it explain the methods that you can go back and do it yourself? And is it applicable to what you're doing? Okay. It's a two-pronged approach to these, abstract, uh, these literature surveys. First of all, you use the literature survey to, see, to check to see if what you're doing is the same as some, what someone else is doing. Then it's not useful to put it into the body of literature that we have in SP. But if it is useful, if it's different, then you can use it as a reference to talk about in your introduction, which I'll describe a little bit uh, later. But you have to balance when you write the paper. What I mean by that, you got technical content in that paper, but remember our communication funnel, okay? You've got all these great ideas, you've done all this good work, 
But unless you communicate it properly through that communication funnel and write your manuscript, and in the writing quality, it's not going to be read. That's all I can say about that. It won't be read. So there's a balance. Now, planning how to write your paper. Okay. What is your lesson learned from writing that paper? Okay. What, what do you want to communicate to the public? What was the novel idea that you came up with? What was the great case history that no one else looked at before? It was a different technique. What do you want people to understand from your work? That's what you have to bring out in your paper. How does my work differ from what other people have done? Okay. Papers that aren't case history is a little bit difficult. Okay. And what was useful from the literature survey? Maybe that's in the literature survey. I mentioned that you want to include those in your references and discussion in the introduction. Okay. What was useful that you need to use as a, one of your references? What did they do? What did those authors do? And who are you writing to? Who is your audience? Is it the whole SPE community? Probably not. Is it a bunch of reservoir engineers who are doing water flooding? A bunch of engineers doing uh, pressure transient analysis that know specifically about the software you used? Is it um, a bunch of people, a bunch of engineers that know PVT analysis or how to do bound hole sampling? You know, who are you writing to? You don't need to, and the reason that's important, you don't want to explain every th specific thing in your paper like you're writing it to the wider audience of SPE. You want to make specific explanations of your techniques and of your symbols and of your ideas. Okay? Keep that in mind. Yes, sir? Say again? You mean in the paper? Did everybody hear the, uh, the question? Or sidebars or uh, footnotes? or Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, in the paper, yes. Yep. I mean, that they, we, do have, we do do footnotes in the papers, uh, especially if they're um, internal reports. We do footnotes like that, even in the, the presentations. So, yeah. But you've got to explain it. You've got to explain what was in there, because obviously the rest of the, the SP body can't go and look at these internal reports, as an example. Can't emphasize this enough. Please remember who you're writing to. Okay? Identify your audience. Who's the engineers that you're writing to? Is it production engineers, drilling engineers, reservoir engineers? Then you can narrow it down. What kind of drilling engineer do you want to write to? Ones that specialize in torque and drag calculations, one that specialize in weight on bit calculation, ones that spe specialize in horizontal well delivery. Write for them. Write like you're writing that audience of people that are sitting in the room and you're presenting to them. Understand what the basic audience needs are, okay? What does your audience want to get out of spending time to come to the conference and listening to your presentation? Think, at it, think about it from their point of view. They want to know what the problem is, okay, why you did this work, why you conducted the project. Okay. What was the solution you came up with? How did you solve the problem? Okay. And how did that contribute, when you solved the problem, how did that contribute to the industry? Okay, how is it different from some other person that contributed to a similar problem that you've listed in your introduction? They want to know that. What? And then what is the value? Why should the audience listen to you? Okay. What I'd like to say is that, okay, the only way I'm going to listen to you is will they make me money or will they save me money? Okay. That's a pretty good uh, litmus test. Or will they save me time? by what they did. So think about the audience when you write these papers, when you do the presentation. The basic manuscript outline, 
Now we're getting into the meat of things. And there's the abstract. We just talked a lot about that, the abstract. I, th I think that's fairly clear. I don't see any more questions about what goes into the abstract. This is the abstract that goes to the program committee that uh, they decide whether it gets accepted or not into the program, okay? That's the first abstract. And you say, Byron, what's that mean? There's, there's two abstracts you write. I'll talk about that later. The first abstract is the one you get accepted. There's the introduction to the paper, where you put, and there's theories and definitions, okay? Introduction is where you have the results of all your literature survey, who's done what and how it compares to what you've done. Equipment and or processes, the data and results, all the data that you've done, all the data that you've generated, or all the data that you've captured, and then the results of any computer output, that's put in a section. Then you have conclusions, okay? What do you conclude from all this data, all this work that you've done? Then you have acknowledgments, okay? Who has helped you put that paper together? I'm not talking about co-authors. I'm talking about people that, like your company or your, your partners that allowed you to present this paper. Those are what go in the acknowledgments. You have to acknowledge them. And then the references. We talked a little bit about references. And the SPE style guide and the author kit tells you about how to document references. Any questions? OK, you all must know all this then. OK. But the point is, everything has its place. And I like to put this slide up here because it's a, it's a, a visualization of a doctor looking at someone's spine. And everything is in its place. And that's the way the manuscript outline is. Everything goes one after the other and has a specific order, okay? Just like the vertebrae in your spine. So adapting, how do you adapt your work to that basic outline structure, okay? You go back to this outline structure, abstract introduction all the way to references. How do you adapt what you've done into that outline? The question is, how do you handle multiple subjects in a paper? Okay. Um, yeah, um, you can, my opinion is that you maybe write two papers, okay? Uh, because otherwise you run the risk of you write on multiple subjects in the same paper, you confuse the reader, okay? And you want a clear and concise story when you write this. And let's say you're a specific audience, you know who you're targeting it to, you may be able to get away with it, but that's, that's a tough call. I would almost err on the side of writing two papers and say, okay, there's, there's, there's a, a paper B that's coming. Stand by. Yes, sir. How do you blend? The question is, how do you uh, do like a case study in blending multiple technologies into one paper? Uh, the answer is there's no clear answer. Okay, you, you got to be real creative, and authors have to be very creative in that. You can either err on the side of two different papers or several different papers. Or you've got to write a good storyline that makes it all concise and understandable to the reader. Just, just I, I think a good guideline is to sit on the reader's side and understand you've been a reader your whole career and you know what you want. And you're, now you're going to be the author writing that paper. And write it to yourself. How would you want it to sound? I mean, that's the, that's the only guideline I can give. Okay. Adapting to the basic outline, we've, talked a little, we, we've been talking in this discussion this morning a little bit about that. So like a laboratory study, okay? Explain your experimental methods and how you ex execute an evaluation. You might err on the side of uh, conservatism by putting all that in the appendix. You might think that it's too much for your reader to read all about your laboratory procedures. That'd be fine. Field application, this is like case studies. Okay, what's the field data before and after? Application, okay. Simulation study. Simulation study. Um, you wanna explain a simulation study so your reader can pick up that work and do it themselves. Okay, so you need to explain all the variables in the simulation model what the assumptions and the key factors that made that, that got the results that they got to. Yep. 